So I'm going to make perhaps a bold statement. Festivals play a defining and important role in our sustainable development and green transition of our society. Why? Because festivals, with their temporary nature, their playfulness, their aesthetics and changing scenery, can make you and I, an audience, partners and people in general, believe in that the green transition is indeed possible. We as festival need to keep asking ourselves the very inspiring question, what if? Thank you. You're very patient people. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sanne. I'm head of sustainability at Roskilde Festival. Roskilde Festival is a non-profit festival that takes place every year in Denmark. We just celebrated 50 years of music, art and activism and community. I'm going to do a deep dive into how Roskilde Festival engages in the green transition and hopefully inspire other festivals on their journey towards sustainability. As one of Denmark's largest cultural events, with 130,000 participants with an average age of 25, Roskilde Festival has a special responsibility to inspire, act and move our participants, our partners and our society in a more sustainable direction, also outside the festival. We do this by donating all of our profits to charity, choosing sustainable solutions, engaging in value-based partnerships, creating new formats, and by using the festival as a testing laboratory for new green solutions. We're the fourth largest city of Denmark for eight days, and we face many of the same challenges as the society surrounding us. The most negative impact from the festival comes from food and beverages, energy and waste. Waste such as left behind and non recyclable tents and air mattresses. We address these challenges in different ways. First and foremost, we set ambitious targets and break them down into workable sizes so that we, my colleagues and the many volunteers who are engaged in the festival have a clear framework of what we're going to do and know when we have succeeded. We create new business models building on circular principles and when we use circular economy to build new solutions, we not only minimize the emissions and negative impact on the environment locally, but also globally. So an example, to prevent waste from left behind tents and air mattresses, we have invested in over 10,000 different kinds of camping gear, products that we rent out to our participants. In that way, we offer an easy alternative to the cheap, and often left behind camping gear. And our business model includes maintaining and cleaning the equipment so it's ready for the next festival season. We have replaced over 1.8 million single-use cups with reusable cups for all beverages at the festival. But that's not enough. To ensure an environmental sustainable case, we also have to analyze and make sure that the solution is also the best possible solution in a life cycle perspective. We continuously analyze how to make the best solution in a life cycle perspective, considering the transportation of cups and the use of water and energy in the washing process. In 22, we stopped using diesel generators at the festival and the whole festival was entirely powered by the national grid. And during peak hours at the festival, we also use rendered batteries to be able to support the entire festival with clean energy. In this way, we have saved more than 72,000 liters of diesel, equivalent to over 250 tons of CO2. We are an organic festival, and our food stall serves more than one million meals in eight days. This year, 95% of all food served at the festival was organic, and over 85% of all beverages, including soft drinks, beer, coffee, and liquor, was also organic. So at the moment, we're not an all vegetarian festival. And why? Because close to the festival site, we have several fast food companies, cafes, and restaurants waiting to serve our guests meat. We see it as our main mission to reduce meat on the plates 
and make our guests choose plants instead by serving inviting and tasteful plant-based dishes. Dishes that will hopefully open our guests' minds and taste buds to more plant-based menus. But of course also by making a framework for all the food stalls and putting a limit on how much meat they can serve at the festival. And we're on the right track. In 2019, an average meal at Roskilde Festival had an emission of 1.3 kilograms of CO2. This year, it went down to 1.1, but we're aiming at 0.5. But the greatest impact that we can have as an eight days festival, one time a year, is the hope and engagement we can install in our guests, partners, participants and volunteers. Engagement people can practice in their everyday lives as students, co-workers, parents, and being a part of civil society. And one of my biggest learnings working within this field for the last 15 years, don't be afraid to spoil the nice atmosphere and initiate conversations that are hard, also in public. Because sustainable development and green transition is about people, right? It's about our engagement and our actions. So my recommendation for festivals, Changes and transition must happen in conversation, and we cannot wait until the perfect solutions comes along. My experience is that festival guests, volunteers and partners very much would like to be a part of the change, and that they want to contribute so we as a cultural community can push for green transition. And most importantly, show that the green transition is indeed possible. So as festival organizers, we need to keep asking and investigate the question of what if. <laughs>